In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the allegation method to solve questions involving the specific gravities of liquids and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. This question says if a pharmacist mixed one pint of propylene glycol having a specific gravity of 1.2 with 500 milliliters of water, how many milliliters additional of propylene glycol should be added to change the specific gravity to 1.15. So let's quickly analyze the question. Here we want to mix two components. We want to mix the propylene glycol with water. Now propylene glycol and water have different specific gravities, but we want to mix these two components in such a way that we end up with a mixture that has a specific gravity of 1.15. So since we are mixing two components to get our desired mixture, we can solve this question rather expeditiously using the allegation method. And the way the allegation method works is you want to first set up your grid. And so we have two vertical lines and then two horizontal lines. And we want to put the highest specific gravity to the top left the lowest to the bottom left and now our desired specific gravity in the middle. So this is how it's going to look like. From the question, the highest specific gravity is 1.2. So we put the 1.2 in the top left right here. And the lowest specific gravity will be the specific gravity of water. The specific gravity of water is 1. So we want to put that in the bottom left. And our desired specific gravity is 1.15 and that goes right here in the middle. And so the next step is actually to determine the number of parts of each of those components that will be needed to make the mixture. And the way we do that is we take the desired specific gravity, which is 1.15, and subtract that from the highest specific gravity, which is 1.2. So we have 1.2 minus 1.15, and that gives us 0 0.05. And that represents the parts of water. So the water is what has the one as a specific gravity and this 0 0.05 represents the parts of water in the mixture. The next thing we need to do is take the desired specific gravity which is 1.15 and from that subtract the specific gravity of water which is the lower specific gravity and so 1.15 minus 1 gives us 0 0.15. Now that goes to the top right so you have 0 0.15 and this is the parts of the propylene glycol. So let's just call that PPG. So what we need to do now is actually determine the volume of the propylene glycol that we need to use to make our resultant mixture. And so the way we will do that is we'll start off with the ratio, which will state that 500 milliliters, which is the volume of the water, divided by the parts 0 0.05 that should be equal so now we are going to create a proportion so this ratio on the left hand side 500 milliliters divided by 0 0.05 that should be equal to some volume which be the volume of propylene glycol divided by the number of parts of propylene glycol in the mixture so this would be 0 0.15 so we can go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown so x is going to be equal to 500 milliliters times 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.05 and that gives 1500 milliliters. So now we have the volume of propylene glycol that we need to mix with the 500 milliliters of water to form our resultant mixture. But we don't stop here because the question is actually asking for the volume of additional propylene glycol that you use because we originally started out with one pint of propylene glycol. So the way we will do that is we'll take the 1500 milliliters 
and from that we will subtract one pint now one pint is actually 473 milliliters and so now we have 1500 milliliters minus 473 milliliters and that gives us 1027 milliliters so this is the volume in milliliters of additional propylene glycol that you need to actually add to the one point to get your resultant mixture having a specific gravity of 1.15 let's take a look at another question here the question says how many milliliters of a syrup having a specific gravity of 1.35 should be mixed with 3000 milliliters of a syrup having a specific gravity of 1.25 to obtain a product having a specific gravity of 1.31 so here we have two different syrups with different specific gravities and we want to combine those two different syrups to form a third syrup that has a specific gravity of 1.31 and we want to use the allegation method in this situation because that would allow us to arrive at our solution very quickly so the way the allegation works is you need your grid so i'm going to start off with the grid we have two vertical lines and two horizontal lines and we want to put the highest specific gravity in the top left so from the question the highest specific gravity is going to be 1.35 so that goes to the top left and then the lowest specific gravity is 1.25 so that goes to the bottom left and our desired specific gravity goes in the middle so from the question the specific gravity of the desired mixture is 1.31 so that goes in the middle right here so you have 1.31 so now the next thing that we need to do is to determine the parts of each of the syrups that needs to be present in our total mixture and the way we will do that is we will take the 1.31 which is our desired specific gravity and subtract that from the highest specific gravity which is 1.35 so now we have 1.35 minus 1.31 and that gives us 0 0.04 so the 0 0.04 goes to the bottom right and this 0 0.04 represents the parts of the syrup which has a specific gravity of 1.25 so now that we have determined the number of parts of the syrup with the specific gravity of 1.25 we also need to determine the number of parts of the syrup which has a specific gravity of 1.35 and so the way we do that is to take the desired specific gravity which is 1.31 and from that subtract the lower specific gravity which is 1.25 so we have 1.31 minus 1.25 and that gives us 0.06 so the 0.06 goes to the top right and this 0.06 represents the number of parts of the syrup which is specific gravity of 1.35 so from the question we do know that the volume of the syrup with specific gravity of 1.25 that we need to use is 3000 milliliters and so that's useful information because we can set up a ratio which would say that the 3000 milliliters which is the volume of syrup with specific gravity of 1.25 that is actually representing the 0 0.04 parts so with this ratio we can go ahead and set up a proportion and our goal here is to determine the volume in milliliters that goes with the 0 0.06 parts so we can go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown and so x is going to be equal to 3000 milliliters times 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.04 and that gives us 4500 milliliters so we want to take 4500 milliliters of the syrup with the specific gravity of 1.35 and then combine that with the 3000 milliliters of syrup having the specific gravity of 1.25 and we'll end up with a mixture which would be another syrup that has a specific gravity of 1.31 let's take a look at another question this question says how many grams of sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285 and how many grams of water should be used in preparing 500 grams of a sorbitol solution 
having a specific gravity of 1.225. So the way we want to approach this question is to use the allegation method. And so we'll start off by setting up our grid. So we have two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. And we're going to put the specific gravity, which is the highest in the top left, and then the lowest specific gravity in the bottom left, and then our desired will go in the middle. So from the question, the highest specific gravity is 1.285. So that goes to the top left. The lower specific gravity goes in the bottom left, and that's the specific gravity of water, and that is 1. So that goes to the bottom left. And our desired specific gravity is 1.225, and that goes in the middle. 225, so that goes in the middle. So the next thing that we want to do is determine the number of parts of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285. Now, the way we will do that is to take the desired specific gravity and subtract from that the lower specific gravity, which in this question happens to be the specific gravity of water. So we would have 1.225 minus 1, and that gives us 0 0.225. Now, the 0 0.225 goes to the top right. And so the 0 0.225 is actually representing the number of parts of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285. And so now the next thing that we need to do is determine the number of parts of water. And so the way we will do that is to take the higher specific gravity and subtract from that the desired specific gravity. So in this example, we will take the 1.285 and from that subtract 1.225 now that gives us 0 0.06 and that goes to the bottom right so we have 0 0.06 and this 0 0.06 represents the number of parts of water in the total mixture now from the question we're given the total quantity of sorbitol solution that we want to make and so what we also need to do next is to determine the total number of parts. And so the way we will do that is to take the parts of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285 and add to that the parts of water. So we have 0 0.225 plus 0 0.06 and that gives us essentially 0 0.285. So here, the 0 0.285 represents the total parts, and that would correlate with the 500 grams, which is the total quantity of sorbitol solution that we need to make. And so we can now go ahead and determine the grams of sorbitol solution. And the way we will do that is to take the parts that represents the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285, so that will be 0 0.225 and we will divide that by the total parts which is 0 0.285 and then we set up a proportion in such a way that we need to determine the number of grams of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285 divided by the total quantity which is 500 grams so you notice in the denominator on the left hand side you have the total parts and on the right hand side in the denominator you have the total quantity that you want to make in the numerator you have the parts of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285 and on the right hand side in the numerator you are determining the number of grams that represents the number of parts okay so we go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown here and x equals 0 0.225 times 500 grams divided by 0 0.285 and that is equal to 394.74 grams. So we can now go ahead and determine the grams of water and the way we want to do that is to take the total quantity that we need to make 
which is 500 grams of sorbitol solution and from that subtract the quantity in grams of the sorbitol solution having a specific gravity of 1.285 so that will be minus 394.74 grams and that is going to be equal to 105.26 grams so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it and if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i see them if you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations tips tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video